This tool is a game changer when it comes to in painting and I wish I knew it sooner. Fixing hands like this is now a breeze and changing any aspect of an image as well. It's super easy to use, VRAM friendly and is super powerful. I'm talking about focus. There are two install methods. For the first one go to this URL and scroll down until you find click here to install focus. Click on it and afterwards click on click here to download. After your download is finished, make a right click and say extract all. Select your destination folder and click extract. This is how it works on Windows 11. It's not digitally signed so you need to click on more info and press the run anyway button. This will now download some prerequisites and depending on your internet connection can take a while. If you have stability metrics like I introduced in this video, you can do a super simple install of Focus. Just click add package and in here click focus. Since I already have it installed I need to rename it and then you can just click install. When it's finished click launch. No matter which installation method you use you will see this super simple UI. But don't be fooled it's a fully fledged image generator. Image of a cute robot. Click generate. Easy, right? By checking the advanced box down here, it will open up the settings on the right. You can choose between different performance modes and presets. If you select another preset, be aware that Focus may download other models in the background. What happens if we set performance to quality? Let's find out. Down here you can see it cranked up the sampling steps from 30 to 60. This will take longer to render. Here it's quite an improvement, but that may be not always the case. So keep that in mind. Now let's inpaint. Click down here on input image and select inpaint or outpaint. Here you can drop your image you want to work on. We are using this image that I created earlier using the Mecha Gorgeous Armor SDXL LoRa. All the links are in the video description. Back in focus I have a couple of options. I can increase or decrease my brush size. I can undo the last inpainting step or I can get rid of the inpaint mask entirely. The button up here removes the image from the canvas. In the upper left corner you can find shortcuts that make your inpainting life easier. So zooming in or putting the image into full screen are very helpful tools. Let's start with improving the hands. So I'm creating a mask around the left hand. Down here we have three options, inpaint or outpaint, improve detail and modify content. Don't worry, I will demonstrate all of them. I write an additional prompt, detailed female hand holding katana. I press Ctrl Enter to start the render. The first result wasn't great, but the second result got the hand right. Instead of katana, I maybe should have prompted sword hilt or something, but for now let's leave it as is. We want to keep working with this image and depending on your browser, you can drag and drop it down here. But as you can see, this does not work using Firefox. If that's the case, you have to save the image with the button up here and then drag it over from your explorer window. Now let's do the same for the hand on the other side. And we write detailed female hand in mecha armor. Press Ctrl Enter again and let's go up here. Okay, instead of a hand I got a head. I don't think it's because of this here, but I delete it anyway. Oh, I wrote detailed female instead of female hand. So let's try again, shall we? Okay, this prompt yielded good results. I love this here more, so I'm going to save this to my hard drive and then drag it over again. Okay, how about some bigger changes? I want to change her armor into the Mandalorian armor. Let's see how this works. In stability metrics, you have to put your LoRa under Matrix Models LoRa. If you have the standalone installation, then just go to Models LoRa and put it in there. To use LoRa, scroll up and click here on Models. And down here you can select up to 5 LoRa's. By default, Focus uses Juggernaut XL as a checkpoint, but you can also switch it to SD 1.5 checkpoints and LoRa's. If you cannot see your LoRa, then scroll to the bottom of the page and click the refresh button or press F5. 
but this will reset the UI. I increase my brush size and start to paint over her armor. Uh, that's a little much, I start again. It's good to let go of the mouse button from time to time, otherwise you cannot undo steps. Let's cover her whole body apart from her hands because it will probably make the hands worse. I'm also leaving the katana out. How about this? Below here we have to switch from improve detail to in paint or out paint because we are going to make some significant changes. We scroll up and we type female in Mandalorian armor and head visible. Okay, let's render it. This is off to a great start. I mean, it destroyed a little bit of the body proportions, but overall we can work with that. This happened because we allowed to change too much in the image. Let's decrease the LoRa weight a bit, but there's a more important setting. Scroll to the top and click Advanced. We now need to change the box developer debug mode. Click on the InPaint tab and scroll down until you find InPaint denoising strength. Let's decrease the in-paint denoising strength to 0.8. A lower value means to keep more of the original image. And let's render it once more. This is a huge improvement, but let's decrease the in-paint denoising strength once more. Because if you look where we're coming from, it's still too much change for my taste. Let's try 0.6 here. It may be too low, but we will see. Ah, great. This is a perfect compromise in my opinion. You could go higher again to 0.7, but let's leave it as is. There will always be a fine line between too high of a denoising strength and too low. You have to experiment and find the best value you for yourself. There's still so much we can do, so for our next step deactivate the Mandalorian Laura. Let's go down here and choose modify content. This is for more drastic changes. Let's go up here and clear the mask and drag our new image in of course. When drawing a new mask, try to not hit too much of our character. I paint over the katana because I don't want it anymore. It helps quite a lot if you zoom in and also decrease your brush size. I will speed the video up because you already know how to in-paint a mask. Down here let's prompt photorealistic empty ballroom. Okay, both images are really interesting. I think I like this one more. It's really interesting that he in-painted hair on this part here because she originally had hair in this area. As a bonus, I will later show you how you can extend your image. So it's called out-painting. It's amazing, you will see. But now she doesn't wear appropriate clothing in my opinion. So let's change that again. We are going to paint over her whole body without the face. I created the in-paint mask bigger as I needed because sometimes it's good to give the image some room. And down here we switch back to in-paint or out-paint. We go up here and for prompt we are typing elegant evening dress. Hit generate and be excited for the outcome. As you can see from these renders we have to decrease the denoising again. And again let's pick a Laura for this. We head over to Civitai and I type elegant dress. Let's pick this one here. The example images are really interesting, so I think it's a good choice. Click the button up here to download it. Don't forget to put it into your LoRa folder. We head back and scroll down, press the refresh all files button. Now focus should know our address Laura. I like my Lauras in order, so I put it in a subfolder off screen. So for me, it's sdxl backslash elegant evening wear. We activate it and set the strength to 0.75 here. Let's look at the trigger words on civil time. Okay, apparently it doesn't have trigger words. It should be down here. And the images don't provide example prompts. Great, I love it. In that case, we keep our prompt as elegant evening dress and hope for the best. Let's decrease our in-paint denoising strength. So go up here to advanced and scroll down here. Don't forget to click the in-paint tab. We set the value to 0.6 because it worked great with the Mandalorian armor. Press Ctrl Enter for another round of image generation. The results we have here are not great, so the head is too big for the rest of the body. Let's decrease the denoising strength to 0.5. Don't go too low because otherwise you won't see any changes at all. For closing, I suggest 
0.4 to 0.8. Just for fun, let's change the prompt to colorful, elegant evening dress. In this image, you still can see a lot of the Mandalorian armor, so we have to go slightly higher. Let's try 0.55. Okay, and once again, as expected, it destroyed the hands again, and I wouldn't call these dresses colorful, but let's keep working with these images anyway. One more thing, I want to change her hair color before we outpaint. So the lesson learned here is first inpaint the background, then change the outfit or the body pose, and fix the finer details like eye color, hair color in the end. So the order I took here was okay for demonstration purposes, but for your AI art projects, you want to stick to the order I just mentioned. I think she wants colorful punky hair. I'm actually excited for the result. I like both images very much, but let's use this one here. Since you already know how to fix hands, I will do the fix off screen and I will see you afterwards. Now it's time to outpaint. In order to do this, you have to change the method to inpaint or outpaint. Now you can define which side you want to outpaint. I would say we outpaint to the left and to the right. Focus doesn't need a prompt, you can just hit generate. Let's see what we got here. Ah, uh, this is okay. Ah, uh, this is great. Now she's standing in a hotel lobby. She looks a little bit like she's photoshopped into the image. But the thing is, we changed every aspect of an image. So basically, if you have to change that much, then generate a new image with a new prompt instead of inpaint everything. You can do more than inpaint and outpaint generated images. Let's take this picture here I took on my last trip to Scotland and let's outpaint it. I leave it as left and right and click generate. The first attempt isn't that great. This here is really cool. I like this as well. And this one here with the wall is also okay, I think. You can do a lot of more stuff with focus, but Inpaint and outpaint are the two main reasons I'm using this. Since it's based on SDXL and SD 1.5, it can't inpaint text, unfortunately. If you want me to make a video about inpainting text and images, then leave a comment, like and subscribe. And if you want to know what the best workflow for Automatic 11 and Forge is, then check out this video next.